Happy Easter, my dear friends. Today we are going to pray the third day of Novena. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful Jesus, from the treasure of your mercy, you impact your gracious and to each of us now. Receive us into the abode of your most compassion. And never let us be destroyed. We beg this praise of you by that most wondrous love. For the heavenly Father, we the wish you Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon faithful souls as upon the inheritance of your Son. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, grant them your blessing and confirm them with your blessing. Thus may they never fail in love or lose the treasure of holy faith, but rather of the angels and saints. May the Lord glorify your boundless mercy for endless ages. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Sponges Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In that moment, we see those for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
in actual moment. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in the name of jesus christ for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us in the world For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Savior. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one. Holy mortal one, have mercy on us in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us in the world. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in whom is the strength and the treasure of the people. Look on your hands and increase your mercy, that in difficult moments we may not despair, nor be cast despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Well, good morning. Happy Easter. It's great to see everybody this morning. I want to welcome everybody to our celebration and wish you a very special welcome if you're visiting with us and with family for this weekend. Or if you might be new to the parish, we're delighted you could come and celebrate this morning. And we wish a very warm and happy Easter to anyone celebrating with us remotely as well. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad. For Jesus Christ is truly risen. So we, the baptized into his death, have raised with him. And we must proclaim the good news that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Since Christ, the sacrificial Paschal Lamb, let us feast with joy in the Lord. And the intention for this early Mass is for all the intentions of our parish. So while we continue to gather this morning, let's stand and sing in the Breaking Bread books. This is the day. It's number 810, so please join us. Number 810, this is the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, my dear friends. Happy Easter. I think some of us, it's not normal to come for Mass 6.30, because the Lord has risen, and he has done wondrous things for us in our lives, 
as a catholics we need to thank god the father for sending his son jesus christ and being resurrected we have come here to celebrate that resurrection are we resurrected from our own old ways into new ways are we have changed our old behaviors into new behaviors we become loving families concentrating on god's love in our lives today's resurrection jesus has lot of message to teach each one of us my dear friends with a sincere and contrite heart let us acknowledge our shortcomings and failures so that we also can resurrect we also can be resurrected with a jesus christ You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for the us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, 
Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb, the sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen, to Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon and Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter, my dear friends. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. I think all of you have got up today with vigor and enthusiasm. (laughs) Because we are not going to have another time like this. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today's message from the first reading of the Word of God is presented to us by our first Pope. Who is our first Pope? Often we do not think of Peter as the first Pope. Rather, we think of him as Saint Peter. But in reality, it is who received the keys to the kingdom of God and he was in fact the first pontiff of the Holy Catholic Church. Most of us, when we look at our Pope Francis, we don't connect how Pope Francis has reached this stage. There was a continuity. And today, when we speak about Pope Francis, he has also is given the key of the kingdom of heaven. So, my dear friends, as a spiritual leader of the Church of Jesus Christ, Peter was being established here on earth. St. Peter took his place of authority and began to speak to those who had assembled in the house of Cornelius. St. Peter said, You know the message of God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Peter affirmed for centuries the people of God had waited for the coming of Messiah who would bring peace to the world to reconcile man with God. Jesus is the Lord of all. Through Jesus, God the Father had fulfilled all his promises that are found in the Old Testament. In the presence of all, Peter affirmed that he and the disciples of the Lord were witnesses to all what Jesus had done in Judea and in Jerusalem. What was said about Jesus was not a fabricated story. It was the truth. The disciples of Christ lived alongside him and witnessed everything that he had done and said. Peter testified that Jesus was indeed crucified and that he died on the Holy Cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day. And after his glorious resurrection, Jesus appeared to many of the disciples who were chosen by God as, as witnesses. Some say he might have appeared more than 500 people. Now when Jesus appeared to the disciples, it was not in a dream or a, in a vision, nor was it the spirit of Jesus who appeared to the disciples because a spirit cannot eat or drink. It was the Lord Jesus himself. He had resurrected from the dead. In his resurrected physical body, Jesus ate and drank with the disciples. When Jesus came to the disciples, he gave them a command. Jesus commanded the disciples to preach the gospel and to testify to all that he was the one sent by God to judge the living and the dead. Jesus was the promised Messiah in fulfillment of the scriptures. How many of us speak about Jesus at least two or three minutes in a day? You have a great responsibility to announce the gospel message every day. Jesus gave authority to forgive sins to his disciples. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Do you forgive? Many say, I can't forgive, Father. Memories fade, but the incident event remain. 
as fresh. That's why we say we can't forgive. Today Jesus is telling, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Let us forgive the sins of the other. Today, second reading, we heard that if we have raised with Christ, we should seek the things that are from above, where Christ dwells in heaven. We should set our minds on spiritual things, not on worldly things. We are obliged to God to feed our souls with spiritual things as many times as need arise. My dear friends, our participation in the celebration of the Holy Mass on Easter Day is a stepping stone towards returning to our living and resurrected faith. It is a sincere resolution, but it must not end here and must continue. We need Jesus in our trials and temptations, joys and sorrows, our bad moods and our good moods. Today's Holy Gospel, we heard how Mary Magdalene wept when she realized that his body was gone believing that someone had stolen it. She wept because she missed Jesus, the divine presence of Jesus. She missed that inner burning desire to, to be near the living Lord Jesus, to follow him, to hear him, to feel loved, to be understood and to be forgiven of sins. Mary Magdalene was not the only one to have these feelings. All the disciples of Jesus felt that way. That is why they reacted the way they did when they heard some saying that Jesus was no longer in his tomb, that he had resurrected or that he was appearing here and there to different disciples. The word, Jesus is alive, or I have seen the Lord, were enough to instantly create a great spiritual hunger in the souls of the disciples of Jesus Christ, where emptiness existed because of his death. The worldly minds of the disciples suddenly became alerted to the truth. There was a new hope. Faith was being reinstated in the words that Jesus had spoken while he was, he lived on earth. So my dear friends in Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Lord of all. How many of you experience spiritual hunger? in your day-to-day -day life. It is the will of God that we all experience spiritual hunger for divine presence of the Lord Jesus. It is the will of God that Jesus feed our spiritual hunger. So like Mary Magdalene and the disciples, we will never want to leave his divine presence. When we set our minds on Jesus, we do what is spiritual. While we are in this world, we are not of this world, we become new creation of the godly seed called to obey and serve the Lord Jesus in all righteousness. When you go home today, Think of the words, Jesus is alive. Think of the words, Jesus is the Lord of all. He is your Lord as much as he is my Lord and the Lord of all others, those who are present and those who are not. Remember that spiritual hunger that you experience 
so many times in your lives during those moments when you desired that the lord jesus could be so close to you and he came close to you you felt his warmth his joy and his peace how many of you feel jesus is alive when in an interview cardinal timothy dolan of new york was asked who is the most influential person in his life he answered without hesitation jesus christ of whole up of course a bit perplexed the interviewing reporter clarified i meant someone who is alive to which the cardinal answered with all the surety of not merely belief but first hand experience you know jesus is alive what about you could i think of my heart as a tomb awaiting a resurrection can i identify anything akin to a stone that is holding me back from enjoying the fullness of life there are people say father every day i die you need to resurrect every day <laughs> if you die you need to resurrect because your body says your spirit is in you within you it would be an addiction you need to be resurrected or compulsion something to do bad or good or some hidden and dark secret that i have never shared with anyone i know i am quite sure here all are sitting not angels not gods we are human beings how many of us have got hidden secrets so many years we have never shared we are afraid if i share to my husband something may take place if i share to my wife something may take place we can be as sick as our secrets if you have hidden so many years your secrets you are sick so many years but as pope francis declares we are called to be people of joyful hope not doomsday prophets because of the resurrection of jesus we can all have hopeful joy and go out to share share it with the world now my dear friends in jesus christ awaken your spirits so you may relive those moments not only for a day or two but for every day of your life until you appear before the lord jesus in person while you are in this world be of above for jesus is the lord of all and by the grace of god the father and the power of the holy spirit he can once more ignite or spark your hearts with a burning hunger that will draw you to him amen please stand and let us renew our baptismal promise dear brothers and sisters through the paschal mystery we have been buried with christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life and so now that our our that our lenten observance is concluded let us renew the promise of holy baptism by which we once renounce satan and his works and promise to serve god in the holy catholic church do you renounce satan i do and all his works i do and all his empty show i do do you renounce sin 
so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please now, myself and Deacon, I'll be going this side. Sprinkling, sprinkling the holy water, the deacon Tom will go my this side, right side. Well.
in the fullness of Easter joy, let us bring our needs and hopes to the, the God of life. For the church, that we re renew ourselves in grace on this most blessed of days, we pray to the Lord. Glory our For all who live under the shadow of death and war, that they may experience peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the newly baptized, that God will bless them with his own wisdom and peace on this day and on every day of their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, suffering, lonely, and forgotten, that they may feel the joy of this holy day through our prayers and our loving support, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may find peace in the promise of new life and the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord we glory in the cross and rejoice in the empty tomb, which proclaims salvation and eternal life. We ask for your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection this morning is to be combined with the rice bowls, so please watch for collection baskets at the exits. And while we share our gifts, let's sing, Holy is His Name, still in the breaking bread, it's number 702. Please join us, number 702. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for a spiritual drink. Yes. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly in his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustav, our Archbishop, Mike and Gary, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, today that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Anthony Mary Claret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sit your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Well, we share the Eucharist this morning. Let's sing, I am the bread of life. It's number 342. Please do join us. Number 342.
And for our Thanksgiving this morning, let's sing Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's number 172. Please join us at number 172. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, 
she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just two brief announcements this morning. A reminder that the parish office will be closed tomorrow on Monday. And the Knights of Columbus will be hosting the talent show on the 13th of April at 7 p.m. in the hall. Thanks very much. Novena to Divine Mercy continues after all the, when, all the week we day morning mass. It will end next week, 20 minutes before 5 p.m. Mass. Benediction will be at least 2 p.m. next Sunday. Monday, holy hour at 6.30 and healing Mass at 7.30 p.m. Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Bilingual holy hour, 7.30 occasions Mass. First Friday Mass, First Saturday Mass and Devotions, 8 a.m. Mass, Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, Rosary and Consecration Prayer. Once again, I thank all of you for coming over and participating in the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you abundant blessings that we also are resurrected with Jesus Christ in faith and love and charity. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and receive God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion has drawn to a close, may you who have celebrated the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that, that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. My dear friends, have a wonderful Easter Sunday. Thank you, Father. You too. And while we're sent forth, let's sing Canticle of the Sun. It's number 433. Please do join us. Number 433.